So I'm going to be talking just briefly about the importance and role of parents' responses to children's fears and worries. And I don't think I'm going to really tell you anything that you don't know already. But what I might be able to do is to give you a bit of research evidence that that backs it and might um, give a bit of a rationale for some of the advice that we're giving, particularly some of the advice that we've given in our resources that you've just seen. So the first thing I think that is really important to highlight is that we know that um, children often experience a range of different adverse um, situations. But we know that, you know, a a great number of children uh, manage very well despite experiencing adversity. And we're in a situation right now which is changing rapidly and some children will be experiencing adversity because of it. And we really just wanted to highlight a kind of hopeful message to start with, which is that actually children can show enormous resilience. And there are a number of factors that relate to that that are under the control of people around children and that can be modified in positive ways. So we wanted to really highlight that and that those are obviously involve individual factors in the child that can be promoted, um, but also family factors, level of family support and parental behaviour and wider social support. So clearly now is a really important time for us to be thinking about those factors and how we can best enable families to support each other how we can help parents to behave and respond in the ways that they want to and how children and young people and families can access the social support that they need. And throughout, we have put a few references on um, just in case you want to follow up any of this uh, stuff that we mention um, in more detail. And, um, and actually, it'd be easy for us to share those with you after the webinar. So I'm going to be focusing specifically on parental responses. And in terms of messages to parents, I think one of the important things to point out is that, of course, our expectations about how our children are going to respond to adversity, to difficult situations, are, of course, going to be very heavily influenced by our experience of that child and how we know they tend to react But the other thing that's really important to point out, which we found um, across a number of research studies, is that actually our own expectations of how we would cope in difficult situations also have an important role in fueling our expectations about how our children will respond. So we're partly influenced by our experience of our child, but we're partly experienced also by what we bring to the situation and our own ways of thinking. So this has important implications and just being aware of this can be helpful for parents to just recognise that this happens so that as parents we're aware of our own assumptions um, and not assuming that what we think our children are thinking or feeling is necessarily how it is but instead be aware of our own assumptions and ask our children questions, listen to what they say and be curious. Another thing that we felt was important to point out is that, of course, our reactions to our children do differ when we are feeling under stress. And actually what we find is that how we respond to our children is is very much an interaction between what they bring and how they are and what we bring and how how we're feeling. So, for example, um, on this arrow, you can see the smaller the smaller dot is where children themselves Uh, are not feeling particularly anxious. And then even if we're under stress, we typically are able to sort of parent maybe how we would want to be parenting at that time. We can deal with difficult situations. We can manage to stay calm. We can promote independence in the child. We can enjoy our time together. However, what we see is that when we're under stress as parents, as children become stressed, we start to respond to that differently. We tend to show more signs of anxiety ourselves. We become more likely to step in and take over. And unsurprisingly, given those things, the interactions often become a lot more negative. Whereas when parents are not anxious, actually what we see is when they're responding to their child's anxiety, as the child becomes more anxious, parents who are not feeling particularly anxious tend to actually manage to make themselves look even calmer as their child becomes stressed to be able to take a step back and they're able to continue to enjoy their time together or maybe a little bit less because obviously the child is feeling somewhat under stress. So these things highlight how what we bring to the situation and what our child brings to the situation make a difference. And this is important because 
it's very easy to get in a vi- into a vicious cycle here because our responses to our child are driven by what the child brings, but then our responses then go on to drive the child's reactions. And the difficult thing is that's particularly the case when children themselves are anxious. And actually, if you have a child who's not a very anxious child, has quite a laid back nature, actually, a lot of our behaviours uh, don't have quite so much impact in that context. So, for example, we've done experimental studies and a couple of them are listed here where we ask parents to behave in different ways when their children are having to approach challenging tasks. And for non-anxious children, we trained parents to be more or less independence promoting. So in some conditions, they'd promote independence. In others, they would take over more. For the non-anxious children, it actually didn't make much difference. And parents could really sort of get stuck in, take over, and the children were just fine. Similarly, with non-anxious children, their parents could show signs of visible signs of anxiety in a difficult situation. And again, those children were pretty much fine. It didn't make much difference to them. However... For anxious children, they seem to be much more sensitive to what their parents brought to the situation and much more on the lookout for the signs they were getting for their, from their parent. So for anxious children, when their parents um, promoted independence as opposed to sort of taking over in a difficult situation, they actually then exhibited much less anxiety when they were faced with a challenge themselves. And for anxious children, where their parents showed uh, visible signs of anxiety, we saw those children show much more anxiety when they were faced with a challenge. So what these studies in combination show is, of course, as I said, that we we our responses to our children reflect what the child is bringing to the situation, but also what we are. And unfortunately, with children who are more anxious and stressed, our responses seem to be have a particular impact where they're on the lookout for messages from us. So these are important um, things for us as parents to be aware of. And I think really just reinforce some of the central messages that we have tried to put across in the resources that Emily mentioned. And the first one is I realise this might be easier said than done, but just for us as parents to keep an eye, keep a check on our own anxiety and stress levels so that we can parent in the way that we want to, rather than kind of going on autopilot and being driven by the stress that we're feeling. And in order to make that happen, it's really critical that we give ourselves and parents give themselves permission to lighten the load, take the pressure off themselves when they can. At the, in the current times, a lot of parents are under enormous pressure uh, with children at home, often juggling work, other responsibilities. Um, and so it's really important that they're helped to just take the pressure off where they can um, and lighten the load. And also encouraging parents to really just explore what what works for them, what helps them uh, get the time that they need. At the moment, we are allowed out, uh, out the house once a day for exercise. So, you know, for example, parents might want to think about, will it work best for them to do that with their children, to get their children out? Or if there are two parents in the house, might they want to take turns so that they do get a bit of time on their own as well. And so it's really about helping parents think for themselves about what's going to give them a bit of breathing space, allow them a bit of time to step back so that they can reduce the stress and uh, parent in the way that they want to. And we've got a number of other resources that are specifically aimed at adults for managing their mental health and managing stress um, on the link that we've given you there. So I'm going to unshare my screen now and hand over to Polly, who's going to take the next section.